looking for healthier, fuller hair? Do you want extra money for bills, trips, extracurricular activities for your kids, or do you want to replace your entire income? Monet is the answer. Our products are Leaping Bunny certified, vegan, and Monet can be used by anyone, including your kids and pets. Message me on my Instagram to partner with me. Founder shares are available, and as a market partner, you have access to uncapped bonuses, 45% commission, 35 to 55% off discounts, on top of all-inclusive paid trips. Right now, I also have a free gift for anyone that partners with me, so don't miss out. You can message me on my Instagram at Liz Chilver. We still do seven NUFC Matters show a week for free. But if you want to help support NUFC Matters, then there are a few ways of doing it. Hit the like button on each live broadcast and video. This helps the channel grow. Hit the subscribe button and select the all notifications bell so you don't miss a single show. If you want to help us financially, then you can join the channel using this button with the membership starting at $1.99 a month. Or you can drop us a donation in the chat using a super sticker. We're also looking for sponsors. If you'd like your brand advertised on the flies for the show and featured during the ad break, then email john at nufcmatters.com to arrange today. Welcome along to NUFC Matters with me, Steve Wraith. It is another episode of our worst ever 11, uh, <laughs> just for fun this series. Uh, don't take it too seriously. Um, and it is a pleasure to welcome Sid, uh, who has his own YouTube channel, Songs from the Attic, uh, 1977. Give it a sub. Uh, and uh, Sid, uh, you have been the set the task. Uh, how easy was it? It was, uh, for some of them, it was very easy. It was my concept, we remember rightly, to come up it with was. it. <laughs> it was. Yeah, I've got to give you, I've got to give you the credit, mate. You said, um, what about doing that? And I, I never expected, um, I never expected some people to go, oh, I didn't fancy doing that. And, and, and you know, it's an easy show to do. I yeah. mean, I've, I've done mine. Uh, obviously, we've had George, we've had Martin, who uh, went off and did the first one. But um, it's such a great idea. It is. Someone... I'm, well, I'm not going to try and slaughter people too much, because what I will put out there, um, these as bad as I think these players are, they've all done something that we haven't done, and that's play for Newcastle United. Yeah, exactly. That'll give me right arm for it. So fair enough. You know, fair dues. Exactly, mate. Exactly. So as always, you um, have got um, you've got to follow the rules. We've got one to eleven. You've got three subs, and you've got a manager. And we we did make one little rule up, which was that you know you couldn't have anyone who currently plays for the club. Yeah. Um, you know, which which well, is yeah, fair. Yeah. Enough. It's not it's not fair. Yeah, it's not fair on anybody to, to do that. So so yes, um, we all start with a goalkeeper. Uh, yeah, well, I've, I've come up with my own little rule up there. They had to play about five, at least five times for Newcastle United. All right, so okay. Some, some players, and also I looked at the idea of like the cost of them, and I put that into the equation. So if a couple of them might not be the worst ever. But for, if I look at pound for pound as well, there is that issue to go with it. That's, that's funny, why you know, think, because that's why Fumac has not made my list. You know, <laughs> see, that's why I, I my rule my rule was I can see where you're coming from with that. My rule with my team, uh, without spoiling it in case people haven't watched it, 
is um, that, you know, it, 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 if they'd had a good career before they came to Newcastle and they hadn't, but they came to Newcastle and didn't play the game, that's because they were crap. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, so I, a couple of couple of mine, which, you know, people will have seen now, um, you know, literally played, one played no games and one played um, a handful of games, two two or three games. And it's incredible just to think that Newcastle actually went out and spent money on some of these players to, to, to actually not play. Some of it comes down to turmoil amongst managers and stuff yes. like that. Some of it comes down to boardroom turmoil and change change happens at football clubs. Somebody gets bought and the manager leaves. But anyway, enough waffle from me. This is your show. Um, yeah. who, who have you got in goal? Right, well, there was some tough choices. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, Hooper would have sprung to mind, you know, and, and uh, I'm sure he's been picked by a number of people. But I, I've gone slightly older and I've gone with Steve Hardwick. The man couldn't catch cold. He was just absolutely awful. He, he was he was really short as well, if I remember rightly, for a goalkeeper. He was only about five foot ten or five foot eleven, and. Um, he was just not, he was awful. He was absolutely, frankly, he was awful. And those are the days of, a lot of teams had a lot of short keepers. I remember Barry Siddle, I remember for something, I'm sure he was quite short, but he was a good goalkeeper. But we had Hardwick and he was, he was just awful. I remember going to see a reserves game once, and I'm sure he dropped it, caught on the line and dropped it in against Liverpool. Um, he just, he had nothing. He had nothing that I could physically see going for him. His kicking was poor, his saves were poor. He was just a, uh, yeah, he was he was just terrible. Terrible goalkeeper in, a, in an awful period of time under the Bill McGarry regime. And I think he might have lasted through to Arthur Cox and then Arthur Cox got rid of him. And then we got some really good keepers under Kevin Carr and Martin Thomas, who were top keepers in my opinion. But uh, Steve Hardwick does not fit under that category. He was just awful, awful. I mean, we'd had other good keepers before and we had Willie Matt Fall. For a season, you had Mick Mahoney, super goalie, tra la 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 la, and uh, and then Steve Hardwick. It was just, yeah, I, I can't, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to sort of slate him anymore. He was just awful. But Hooper could have pushed him. Hooper did push him. I mean, any guy, any keeper who comes back allegedly three stone overweight over the summer period has to be in the mix. <laughs> he um, he started the chest now. He started at Chesterfield 38 games. He came to Newcastle. He actually played between 77 and 83, yeah. 92 games uh, right. for Newcastle United. Um, after that, um, I mean, he, he did have loan periods while he was at Newcastle. Detroit Express, what a great name. Uh, yeah, Oxford, yeah. Ox, Oxford United uh, was then his next club. Um, 156 appearances for Oxford. Did really well there, 83. Did, it, did he not win? He must have won a cup with them, did he? I think he won the Milk Cup, uh, but there's right. very... Uh, I certainly think he might have been part of the squad, depending, the squad on yeah. how many, depending on how many substitutes they had. Yeah. Um, he wow. then had loan, but, but he went out on loan in 85, and I have a feeling that that was... That's, I think that's the year they won the Cup, that's 85, the one that, 86. That, yeah, he was in Crystal Palace. He went to Sunderland. Um, I didn't know that. He went I to Sunderland on loan in 87. Uh, he finished his career um, on a hiatus at uh, Huddersfield, 1988 to 1991. Played 109 games. Uh, for Huddersfield and uh, finished his career with 434 appearances. Uh, didn't, score, didn't score a goal though. <laughs> Unlike Pat Jennings. With, exactly, uh, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Well, so it's a good, it's a good career, you know. I'm sure, you, yeah. I'm sure you can live with my uh, criticism and describe him as the worst I've seen. He wouldn't have got paid much money for it, mate. I bet yeah. he ended up having to do a job at the end. But there's very little out there about Steve Hardwick and what actually happened to him. So uh, if you know what happened to Steve Hardwick, leave a comment uh, below. And if you are Steve Hardwick, give us a shout. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> we apologise, but I would like to get you on the show and have a chat about your time in Newcastle. It would be good. <laughs> All right. Have you gone for a back three, a back four? What are you going I've for? I've gone back four. I've gone with a team that I thought would be the worst, obviously the worst. I've gone for a formation. I think I've gone 4-4. Four, four, to the worst possible team I can pick um, in terms of what would they, I'm sure they get hammered. Yeah. And um, so I've gone left, oh, we're going left back first. Go for it, mate. So I've gone for a player, the phrase he's fat, he's round, he bounces off the ground. And uh, I've gone with John Bailey. Oh, I love this because the period you picked, it gives us the opportunity to get a Panini football sticker in. <laughs> I mean, he was 28 when we signed him, 28. When Stone. I was 28, I was sort of, you know, I was quite I was oh. slim, slimmer than I am now and reasonable. I mean, he was 28. What the hell's going on there? 
I mean, he, he genuinely looks like he's been to the club before the match. He he's probably had, a few, been. had a few pints, had a Keegan's burger and drifted into the game. You know, he was he was awful. And yet somehow, I mean, he was so out of shape when you look at today's modern football. But even then, you know, we, we'd had footballers in, in defence at the time. We'd had like John Anderson and Kenny Wharton, who were both very fit and very good players, may I add. But John Bailey, my God, he was just awful. Um, he'd won the FA Cup with Everton. I'm not even sure if he'd won the league, but I know he won the FA Cup with Everton. FA, FA Cup winner in 84, mate, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and Everton were a great team as well. I mean, genuinely, they were up there with Liverpool as the best team of the 1980s. And um, he, oh, he, was, oh, he was crap. <laughs> you know, that's all I can say. <laughs> he, he was slow. He was fat. He just looked ridiculous. Um, terrible perm. Sometimes, you know... I think he had a tash for a while. Uh, it was just awful look. Uh, I just there was nothing about it that really endeared him to me, to me as a footballer. You know, uh, I'm sure he must have been pretty decent because he played for Everton and won the FA Cup, uh, and, and it was a, as I say, it was a top top team. But no, nah. I was shocked when I went and did the research and discovered he was 28. I, yeah. I couldn't believe it. 28 when he signed for it. I, I honestly thought we'd got him at the end of his career and he was like, like Kenny Sanson, but Sanson was still class. And I thought he was about 34, 35. I mean, he looks about 45 there. It's funny because when you look at when you look at people's stats these days, players, players, you know, since then, you know, people tend to play 500, you know, four, 500, 600 of games, maybe for clubs now. Most of these players played about 400. It's probably because their bodies gave in because of the yeah. amount of alcohol they used to have, like, you know, <laughs> during the week and at a weekend after the match or before the match. Um, but yeah, he had, a, he had a decent career 75 to 79, Blackburn, 120 appearances. Went to Everton, you rightly mentioned he won the FA Cup in the 1984 FA Cup final. Uh, he was there from 79 to 85. He's an Everton legend, 171 appearances, three goals. Came to Newcastle under the, the, the management of Jack Charlton in 85. And he, he was steady away, but just as you say, you know, he's, he's one of those who probably makes a few people's teams. 40 appearances, no goals for Newcastle. Looked as if he was probably coming towards the end of his career. Did finish off at Bristol City, 88 to 91. End career at 28. What, what's that all about? <laughs> yeah, he yeah he ended up he ended up and again very little about John Bailey. I, I'm, I'm in the back of my mind. There's something tells us he was in the news recently, and I'm not sure what it was for. Um, I'm not sure whether he, whether you know whether he hadn't been well or whatever. I can't remember what it was, but I hope he is okay. I mean, certainly yeah, yeah. the stories I get from some of the players from around that time, he's he was a character. You know what I mean? I mean he was a, come here, it just epitomised that all I can remember was he just literally got the ball. I mean, Jack Charlton is one of the worst managers we've had at the club. I'm, I'm putting that out there. And uh, even though he was a really nice man, taught me how to chest the ball, bizarrely. But that's another story. And uh, literally, get the ball, lads. Let's lump it up to the big lad up front. Let's forget the yeah. midfield. Forget them quality players like Waddle and Beardsley. We don't need them. Let's just lump it up the front. And he was one of the lumpers. And uh, yeah, it was garbage to watch. And he, he maybe gets picked and suffers through through that era of dreadful football at the watch. So, yeah, uh, yeah, Jones I can in. understand why it's in. Okay, uh, which position are you going for next? Uh, right back, I've gone um, late 80s, um, and I've gone with uh, Mark Stimson. <laughs> I'm, I'm just laughing saying his name. And I hated, I hated that strip. Yeah, we, we had, if I remember rightly, it was Stimson and Sweeney, uh, both terrible. Uh, both could have made it. But um, Sweeney's a local lad, so I didn't want to put him in. Uh, Stimson, just terrible. Uh, couldn't trap the bag of cement. I mean, it was an awful, awful period of football at the time to watch. He just, he seemed to have, yeah, he seemed to have nothing going for him. He was just, he got skinned left, right and centre. Every time I seen him get the ball, he just got absolutely tore apart. He didn't go forward very well, defensively poor. He just seemed to have nothing. And um, and again, there were a couple of choices that I could have went with, but he was he was just the standout. He was the standout player for me. When I when I try and look back at some of the other players, we we've been quite blessed really with some top defenders uh, and top fullbacks, but he, he he isn't one of them. I mean, he just he couldn't defend, couldn't attack. His his ball skills weren't great. Uh, yeah. 
I can, yeah, yeah. I can, I can, I conquer. He didn't, he didn't make my team. Me and me mate Matty always used to stand in the paddocks and watch him. And all he ever did was this cross field ball. Um, he, when it, if he did get the ball, if he was looking to get the ball, it was this cross field ball from left to right. That's all he could do, and it never got to the man. <laughs> and it was, it, and literally, as you see, we get beat with everything. Um, I was going to wind you up and see. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him on both sides, left and right. Um, but yeah. Wow. I was I was gonna wind you up and say he was a close personal friend of mine, Sid. <laughs> uh, there is, is me. Is that Roy Aiken on the end there? So that's me and Matty with a copy of the very first issue with the mighty Quinn. Uh, there's me wearing that strip, by the way. I might have disliked it, but I did wear it. Uh, and that's Mark Stimson. He just had his head done for the, the that was the Newcastle United Supporters wow. Club end of season due at St James's Park with Roy Aiken and Mark Stimson. Yeah. Yeah, Roy Roy Aiken was a good player, mind you. Uh, I remember watching him make his debut for Newcastle. He was a good player. He nearly made my, he nearly made my eleven. Uh, worst no, 11. he nearly made my worst eleven. He was terrible at the club. Yeah, he had a terrific debut for Newcastle. I remember his debut. I remember somebody well, shouting. Conceded feed... five goal, four goals. I remember somebody shouting, "Feed the bear!" <laughs> well, that, that was... was that stupid. It's, that was that stupid period where people were wearing bloody Celtic hats and Rangers hats, and, <laughs> and people started singing. I he was <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, just, just, just for the sheer hell of it. There's oh, Mickey. that's a great. Oh, look at Mickey Quinn, man! What a tosh. Mickey Quinn won Player of the Year that year, um, yeah. which, which, with no surprise uh, at all. And but great of him to come along on the night as well. And um, another, another player who was there that night, local lad, David Roach. Oh yes, good God. Um, yes, he was just breaking into the uh, into the first team uh, that year, and then there was uh, Mark McGee. Of Mark course, McGee, was... now McGee was a top top player. Um, Mark... Yeah, McGee, super player, wasn't he? Obviously, he did brilliantly at Aberdeen, but he was a top player. I mean, I remember seeing him score an incredible goal for Newcastle, where he beat about four players. It was magnificent. Just banged it in. It was super cool. Top yeah. player, him, like McGee, great player. And this guy, Lucky Ray, Ray Ranson. Ray Ranson, yes. Became a director at Man City. Man City, I was going to just about to say, yeah, he was at Man City, yeah. I ended up very clever businessman. Again, probably somebody who might have made other people's teams, who knows. Uh, but uh, lucky, lucky Ray is what we used to call him because he was probably <laughs> just probably was just as bad as um, as Mark Stimson, but just seemed to always oh, manage to get Stimson. it. He just yeah. managed to hook a foot in and, and do that. But that was a lot to believe. I knew I would end up hijacking your show when I seen your team. <laughs> uh, okay, so we've got uh, we've got John Billy Mark Stimson in there, uh, Steve Hardwick in the sticks. Uh, who we who have we got sent off? Centre half, first one, number four is Jean Allen Boomsong. You know, he he physically had everything. He was big, he was strong, he was fast. Um, but unfortunately, so physically he had it all, but he was very mentally frail. You Being know, strong he, enough to turn you on, Sid. Yeah, not, not quite. <laughs> but uh, he just literally... <laughs> he, I mean, there was that game. I can't remember the game where he literally mentally collapsed on the park. Yeah. Um, I think he may have been sent off, if I recall rightly. And the, the crowd just lambasted him. He would cost him about £8 million. And uh, he came from Rangers with a big reputation. And he couldn't back it up. He was awful. He was truly awful. And as I say, I, I thought he was mentally frail. He was a very gifted lad in terms of that. I think he spoke about six languages. So he was an intelligent lad, but he just had no football brain on the park. He just, he was awful. He was yeah. absolutely dire. And we've seen some dreadful centre-halves, but I, I think because of the cost, eight million, and I think because of the fact that he just, he just you could see him mentally crumbling on the park. Uh, that's why he's in my team, and I don't recall any really good games with him in in that team. Uh, Soon S bought him, and it was just a terrible purchase. And it was a lot of money then as well. Eight, mon eight million or whatever it was was a hell of a wedge um, yeah. to fork out for him. I think uh, uh, so. Yeah, he was. The problem was the problem was that I think Rangers the previous season had signed him on a five year contract, and he basically gone in. And he basically got him for nothing, hasn't he? And um, Newcastle yeah. could have had him for That's next right. the next right. season, season before. And then right. there was a huge investigation, um, which a big inquiry into Willie Mackay, the agent. Um, I think the Stevens inquiry looked at this transfer because it was like you know, he got a five and a half, a five and a half year contract, it was eight million pound fee, 
um, because the player was out of contract and he joined Rangers for you know just months before. Um, it was just such a strange situation, and and, and quite rightly, mate, he was he was he was poor. He really was. I suspect he'll make a few teams. He was just garbage. As I say, mentally, yeah, but physically, he was fast, he was strong, he was big, he was good in the air, but he just didn't do it. He couldn't do it on the park, and he just, you could I see, he saw him crumble. I mean, you could argue that um, Bramble was almost that way, but Bramble was a little bit strong, and Bramble could play really well. I mean, Bramble's still one of the best passes I've seen at the club, actually, bizarrely, but uh, he always had a mistake in him. Well, Boomsang had a mistake every single game. And yeah. uh, he was, oh, he was terrible. He was, he was terrible. He blamed a lot of it on personal issues, girlfriend being ill, this, that, and the other. But yeah, you know, you, get, get, you know, it, it definitely wasn't down to that. Um, but yeah. I, I mean, when I look through his, he's right. Well, he only played forty-seven times. He was only there a year. Um, you know, cost us an absolute fortune. Ended up going to Juventus, Leon, and Panathinaikos after that. Really? Wow! I didn't realize that. That's some career, actually. Well, he played 33 times for Juventus, scored two goals, went to Lyon, 59 appearances, two goals, Panathin I got 52 appearances, five goals. But all of that in the space of 2006 to 2013. So if you yeah. add it all up, um, you know, 140 appearances in that period. It's, it's not it's that not many, great, is it? Not a great career. It was actually capped by France. Um, wow. 2000, 2003 to 2009, he played for France. Um, 27 games. Wow, well, I'm, I'm genuinely shocked, bearing in mind they had the likes of Turam and Desai yeah. and all these truly great players, maybe slightly before them, but wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm shocked. Yeah, went on, went on to be the assistant manager of Cameroon. Uh, that's right, where yeah. he in 2019. And then uh, another one who I think said uh, gone off to do commentary work and, and, and work in that kind of that kind of field. Um, but yeah, we did give us a good song though. Whenever he used to get the ball, uh, the fans used to go boom. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so who's his partner in crime at the back? Um, I think he played about seven times for us in 2010, and he was so fat, uh, there was a genuine audible gasp when he made his appearance, and From that him. was so Campbell. He turned slower than the Queen Mary. It was just incredible. I've never seen it. I, I was genuinely shocked <laughs> at, at the fact that he, he looked, oh, I mean, he might not have been, but he, he's probably not compared to me, but he looked out of shape. I think it's the best way I'm going to see it. <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> and uh, he, his legs had clearly gone, I think would be the polite way of seeing it. He was just awful. So I think it's really sad when you watch this player who's been a very, very good player. Maybe he's not a great player, but a very good player. And he played for Arsenal, he played for Spurs, he played for England and did really, really well for all three. Um, and a distinguished player and a quality player. But he, oh my God, he was awful. He was terrible. I think he, did he come from Notts County to us or was it the other way around? Um, but, but, I'll double check. He came from, no, he came from Arsenal because he went back he? to Arsenal. So he right. went to top. He was at Tottenham, then Arsenal, then Portsmouth, then Notts County, then went back to Arsenal for a year, and then came to Newcastle. And he finished his career at Newcastle. Right. Yeah. Well, he knew he was. He knew he was done. Then I think he married a Geordie last, didn't he? Yeah, um, it was something to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but oh god, he was. Yeah, it was. It, yeah, yeah, he was just awful, and. Um, so I've got, I've got him in because of just the fact that there was an unnecessary purchase. Um, he, he didn't need to come and play for the club and he was just dire. And I thought it was so sad to watch ruin his reputation for me uh, in front of me and uh, at our club, just just going through the motions. He was just he was just awful. He was done and he should have just he should have been gone by that point. He should he knew his time was up. He should have just gone. Um, yeah, terrible. I mean, we've there were other there were other choices in there that we could have had in a let's see a bramble Andy O'Brien, and I know people might not like to hear that, but he was terrible, and um, and a few others. But uh, no, he, he gets in just because he was just shocking. He was shockingly bad. <laughs> Okay, so you've got your back four, mate. Uh, we're into yep. the midfield four four two formation. Who's uh, yep. first? Um, God. You'll notice a lot of my players come from two key periods generally. Yeah. And uh, the next one is from the 89 period, and I've gone with Kevin Dillon. 
I'm just, just laughing when I see it. <laughs> he must have made other people's teams, surely. Um, he, 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 honestly, well, I'll tell you my story. You, you say what you need to say, and I'll tell you my oh, story. Oh, good God. I mean, he played 62 games. He scored no goals, no goals, which tells you all you need to know from a midfielder. Um, again, <laughs> just I, I just remember him being so bad. You go the you go the game and go, oh my god, Kevin Dillon in the middle of the park. You know, we've gone from some quality players to watching Kevin Dillon. And is this the best we can do? And at the time, it seems to be the case because we went down that that time. And he was just awful. He offered nothing. He literally offered nothing in the in the middle of the park. He couldn't shoot, couldn't pass. Uh, it, well, he could, but not to the Newcastle United players all the time. And uh, he was just. It was just awful. But what were you going to say, Steve? 62 appearances. I put a pound at Ladbrokes, week in, week out, <laughs> on Kevin Dillon to score the first goal for Newcastle United. I lost £62 because of this guy. <laughs> he then signs for Redden. I didn't put a bet on him playing and scoring a goal for Redden. He scored on his debut for Redden. <laughs> I'll never forgive him. And he lives in Sunderland now. And, right. uh, um, yeah, one of my mates um, knows what well, his brother sees him on a regular basis, and he's still going to bookies. So I hope right. he's had as much luck as me. Yeah, well, I, if Kevin Dillon watches it, I'm not going to apologise because he was rubbish. And, <laughs> uh, you know, he, he genuinely was terrible. So there's there's no there's no apology coming from me, like, because he was awful. He was just terrible to watch. Yeah. And, I, I, and, and there were... There were, there were you know, the, some of the midfield that we've had was was not great. I think would be the polite way of saying it. Um, but he he just stands out as a beacon of, of yeah. dross. So definitely does agree with you hundred percent. Okay, who's next? Right, controversial. I've got two controversial picks coming up now. Uh, my number seven um, was for me is the worst of all my players, and I've gone with Alan Smith. Oh. Right, so played 84 league games for Newcastle United, scored no goals. Um, he was a £6 million flop. I remember we signed him from Manchester United, Sam Allardyce. Oh, Alex, if you've got any more of these players, we'll love to take them off your hands. No, thank you. All he ever was good at was getting booked. Um, he was he was terrible. He was finished. He came to Newcastle. And he, clearly, the injury that he'd had at Manchester United, he was not the same player. And he, he, he came as an attacker. And I, I remember seeing some comment once on Twitter and some guy goes, oh, he was signed as a midfielder, this, that and the other. Yeah, he was signed as a striker. Uh, and then he dropped back and then he put him back into the middle. He was rubbish up front for Newcastle. And then he dropped him back into the middle. And then he dropped back further and became a holding midfielder. And he was rubbish in all of those occasions. He started off at £6 million. It was a lot of money to spend at the time. And all he ever did was seem to get booked. And yes, you can act like you know the big man in the in the in the first division or the championship, but I'm talking Premier League football here, and he just wasn't able to do it in Newcastle. He might have done it in the in the championship. I don't really think that counts to me. You know, when we bought you as a Premier League footballer, and he was quite frankly appallingly bad. And then of course, people always could complain about some of our players now sitting on their wages for a year or so. Well, he did it. You know, before before he left and went to some other club in second division or whatever it would have been, or first division. And I just thought he was terrible. He was just literally a walking yellow card all of the time. Um, I mean, yeah, the amount of yellow cards he must have got was incredible. But I just felt he offered nothing. A, a, a truly awful footballer at Newcastle. Good player for Leeds United. Decent player for Leeds United. All right for Man United. Terrible for Newcastle United. Absolutely, you know, stank the room out as far as I was concerned. I just think he's atrocious. Absolutely atrocious. So, yeah. Never the same player from his injury. And as I say, played over 80-odd games and never scored. And didn't look like it. Never looked like it. Even when he played a number of games as a striker. And then they just started dropping him back. So, yeah. Alan Smith, garbage. Only, so, only goal that registered for Newcastle was a friendly he scored friendly, against yeah. Sampdoria, yeah, one, one, a 1-0 one win. Um, he, he did have ankle issues. I'm not saying that's anything to do with it. I mean, he, he did have ankle issues. Played 
it has to be said, a pivotal part in 2009-2010. Um, in the promotion season, he was made vice-captain. Maybe that responsibility was what he needed. He, he seemed to pick up a little bit. But then, obviously, January came, new transfers uh, coming into the club. Wayne Routledge was brought in. Danny Guthrie's form was superb, and he and, and he lost his place. But he hung around for, for quite a while. I, I I forgot how long he was actually at the club. Um, you know, two thousand and seven till two thousand and twelve. Um, my memory told us that he left. You know, pretty much. Uh, you know, after relegation, but uh, you know, and, and into the promotion season, he was there, and that just shows how little impact he had and of course Czech Tioti came in and you know he, he never really had a chance he was always on the fringes and um, carrying that ankle injury all the way through but uh, six million up, pound it was a lot of money, lot of money. then it was a lot of money then people might forget about it now but it was a lot of money then plus the and wages he was, plus the wages and he, was, and he was frankly rubbish but as I say yeah. he's had a great career at Leeds he was excellent for Leeds awful yeah. for us Finished off at MK Dons and Notts County, finished playing in 2018. Um, of course, had England recognition earlier on yeah. in his career. But uh, yeah, he's he's there when he was younger. So that's your first controversial choice. Um, who is your next? My next one is Joey Barton. You're going to love the picture I selected because this is really <laughs> easy. It, it, this, this, this sums them up. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, again, I just remember what I remember listening on the radio at the time. And I remember Supermac used to berate him every week, just about, used to moan about the fact of what quality did he seem to offer to the team. And in the Premier League, I'm, I'm going to say very little. I thought he just didn't offer very much at all. You know, yeah, he was, he was good in the championship. But what we bought him as a Premier League footballer, and he just didn't, to me, didn't really cut it, wasn't sort of, didn't look like he was able to. He might have had one, maybe two good games in the Premier League for me. That's maybe it. So again, just under £6 million were paid from. Again, a lot of money. Was it Sam Allardyce bought him as well? Um, and I just thought he was rubbish. I, I, You know, I just, I don't like him personally as well, which probably adds to the situation. But uh, I just thought, yeah, awful. Just didn't didn't offer me anything, you know. And I've stuck him out on the wing, yeah. Uh, well, I've stuck him. No, I've stuck him in the middle. And I just thought nothing, absolutely nothing. And as you say, that the picture epitomises many things as well. Does it not? You know, if he's not getting his own way, he's going to lash out. He's going to kick you. Um, and, and and I know some fans love all that sort of stuff, but I'd rather like see a bit of quality and go with it. And uh, unfortunately, Joey didn't do it for me. 81 games, seven goals. I think the most of them were penalties. Scored the odd one. Um, not the worst record under the sun, certainly not. But for me, I just thought it came with a huge fanfare. It came with a huge fanfare. I think he played about so many minutes for England, didn't he? And uh, I thought, all right, this this should be good. I'm looking forward to seeing him play. And I just thought, oh, is that it? All right, no, there's nothing there that really makes me jump out and think, wow, this is a player. Yeah. Just, just nothing. Um, so, yeah, Barton makes it. And I know many people will kick off. Oh, he's a great player, Joey. He's this, that and the other. Well, that's fair enough. It's all down to opinions. I just happen to think he's not very good. And uh, that's my opinion. I just don't rate them at all. Yeah, Kim, Kim, Kim with a, a load of controversy around him. And it didn't get any Huge. better. It just yeah. didn't get any better. And, I mean, that picture sums him up because that was the relegation season. That, yeah. was, when Alan, that was when Alan Shearer took over. And when yeah. Alan Shearer needed unity in the dressing room and everyone... He got sent off that game, game, didn't he? He got sent off and he was unavailable for three games. Um, but, but from all accounts, you know, the, the stories that have come out of the dressing room then, he was very disrespectful to Alan Shearer. Had yeah, no I've heard that. Yeah, and, I've um, heard that. You know, that, didn't, that didn't do anybody any favours, you know. Um, became one of the, the few players as well to actually be in jail as a Newcastle player. Um, actually, we actually went. Actually, was behind bars as a Newcastle player, um, and we stood by him. We actually stood by him. We did get that little bit of repay from him when he went to, you know, when he played in that promotion season. And I've got to say, in that opening, that the return to the Premier League was probably probably the best he played. You know, the Championship. Of course, he should be doing well. You know, the level that he was at. But in the in the Premier League return, you know, he was helping pull the strings with the likes of Kevin Nolan and, and Andy Carroll. That little that little team of Barton, Nolan, and, and Carroll worked at that particular time. Mm. But controversy was just never far away, mate. Yeah, 
yeah, as I say, I just don't rate them. So yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Um next um in your uh, your midfield then. Next it's the it's the it's it's well it's is he up front now? Are we up front now? Oh yes, we are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I'm not sure where I've put Barton. I think I must have put Barton on the right wing. Um so if we go up front and then left wing, I don't know which way you want to do it. Which way do you want to go? It's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. Because you I'll got, go you, left wing then. You're giving us Kevin Dillon, what? you're giving us Alan Smith, and you're giving us Joey Barton. So um, I'm going to go with Wayne. Ah. So I've gone with Wayne Faraday on the wing. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, again, he played again that season, 89. He was in that era. I mean, he shouldn't be allowed to play for that moustache alone. It's a terrible moustache. It's a uh, of John Holmes, isn't it? Oh, it's it's awful. Um, and he's he was he was just rubbish. He just he couldn't cross the road. He was really really bad. I mean, there are certain players. I just when, when we go for a drink after the match, and we we and we've all done it when we sat there and ranked some of the worst players we we mentioned. And Stimson and Ferradier always get mentioned. Always get mentioned. And yeah. uh, and there's a reason why they always get mentioned because they're rubbish, and uh, and he was just absolutely dross. When you've seen some of the elegant wingers we've had, I mean, Nobby Solano, Chris Waddle, Ginola, Robert, all these top-notch players, and oh, God, he was God, he was awful. I, I, I know there were others that I could have could have thrown in like Des Hamilton, but I don't blame Des. Des was of a certain level, and I don't think he pretended to be anything else. I think Wayne Ferrady felt he was better than he was as well, like you know, and uh, but he was just atrociously bad. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I don't know what yeah. you remember about, but I thought he was terrible. Well, he was quick. That's what we used to say. He was quick. He could do the the hundred meters in something like ten yeah. seconds, but yeah. he just forgot to take the ball. Um, you know, Queen Sport Rangers. Well, France a... Carr was like that, but France Carr had a teeny bit more. Yeah, just because he scored that fluke of a goal, which was a drop. <laughs> That's the only reason you're saying that. But he, he had a decent enough career before he came. Oh, QPR, 246 games, 21 goals. He was one year short, shy of a testimonial. Came to us, played 33 games, and they were all abysmal. But it was that, you yeah. know, it was that period. It was that period. But, but he see, but his career petered out. Went to Bournemouth, went to West Brom, and went to Cardiff, and you know didn't play well. Just over 100 games between those three teams from 1990 to 1995. Was capped at England under 21 level, made five appearances. But uh, but yeah, Wayne Faraday, certainly somebody who uh, um, always features, I guess, in in discussions. Yeah, right, 100. percent All right, mate. <laughs> Who's next? Um, up front, I'm going with a golden headband. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, Andreas Anderson. Yeah. And th th there were lots of choices we could have had here. I mean, we could have had Mavis, you know. Um, you know, there, there's so many you could name. That, I mean, he was terrible. I remember Kevin Keegan saying famously that he was looking at the cup, looking at the cup final. He was hoping that Newcastle were going to win the cup final. And then he's seen Andre Sanderson warm it up and he just said, I've got no chance. <laughs> and, I th and I think that sums it up. At best sums it up. He had absolutely nothing. The ball would bounce off him. He was as weak as water, wasn't he? He was really weak for a big, strong-looking lad. He got knocked off the ball so easily. He couldn't finish. And I know people will go, they might have gone with like sort of give but he only played with four games and scored. Um, or two games, in the, or they might go for others, you know, like Billy Whitehurst or something. But I, I wouldn't be brave enough not to pick Billy Whitehurst, but pick Billy Whitehurst. <laughs> but uh, or, I mean, see, George Riley could be up there, and there's there's others that we could have thrown in. But this lad was just awful. Yeah, he was yeah. awful. He was he had nothing, and I, I think we paid three and a bit million pound from Kenny Daglish bought him. But bearing in mind, we'd lost Les Ferdinand and Kenny Daglish. And I put this out for there in favour of promoting Kenny Daglish to a point. Daglish argued against uh, Les Ferdinand going. And that's people still think that's not the case, but it's definitely the case. And if you read Terry Mack's book, Terry Mack openly says so. And Daglish had a big argument and almost, I'm not sure if he almost walked because he didn't want uh, Les Ferdinand to go at the time. Um, but we got Andre Sanderson. Oh, my God. To say oh, to go from Les Ferdinand to Andre Sanderson is one of the biggest, biggest 
drop in quality, drops in quality that I've ever seen. It's probably up there with Juno at the Des Hamilton, you know. And you go, what, what really? Is that it? Is that what we've got? He, he was, he was terrible. I love the fact you used the phrase "weak as water." There was a bloke who used to stand behind us in the paddocks in the eighties, shouting, "Come on, your castle, your weak as water." Um, <laughs> I remember those days. Uh, Andreas Anderson's hairstyle, by the way, didn't get any better over the years. Uh, here he is in two thousand and twelve. Now, he's head. clearly going bald. You look at that, he's going bald, he's brushed it all forward. Just accept it, mate, you know. Take take the baldness and accept it. Own it like you owned it. Just own it. Yeah, didn't you do know, a Bobby you... Charlton front comb over. After that, end of season, after that end of season, do I, my hair got shorter and shorter. And when guys had played for Newcastle, I was almost with a skinhead. So I, 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 <laughs> I, I, mine was in your own fault. But, you know... <laughs> He actually played for Milan, Andreas Anderson, of all teams, 13 games and one goal for Milan in his career. Wow. And then it ended up at AIK, um, a Swedish professional club. 82 games, 25 goals. Found his level, 1999. Well, I, th I think that's exactly the phrase I'm going to use with some of the players I picked. They found their levels or they were up the wrong level. Yeah. And uh, and, and that's why I was talking about Des Hamilton before there. He, he, he was not a level of a Premier League footballer. So I'm, I, I didn't put Des in there because I thought it was a little bit Harsh to, to, to throw him in there, even though I could easily have done so. My mate, my mate was betting on I was picking Des Hamilton, but there you have it. <laughs> All right, then next oh, one. The last one, and again, another guy who come with a huge fanfare, and we only had him on loan. And somehow we played for Barcelona as well after us, and it was Luke de Jong. Possibly the worst centre forward I've ever seen at the club. Yeah, I, in fact, I'm going to go as far as says I think he is the worst centre forward I've seen at the club. I mean, he had nothing. He didn't have blistering pace. Wasn't good in the air. Had a poor first touch. Couldn't score. Um, I mean, he just looked lost. He absolutely looked lost. I think Pardew signed him on loan, and um, it, it's not often you see a player play in a number of games as well. He did play a number of games. And he just genuinely looked lost. Uh, he didn't know what he was doing. He was uh, It was a real mystery to me why we got him. I mean, his brother was pretty awful, C.M. de Jong, although you could argue that he that was due to the injury that he got at some point, or various injuries. But he's looked de Jong. Oh, my God, he was terrible. He's the I think he's genuinely the worst I've seen at the club as a centre-forward. He just seemed yeah. to have nothing. I mean, we, we had, we've had some other players, and I forgot the names of some of them. Uh, Riviera, is that yeah. right? He, he Emmanuel was, Riviera. Yeah, he was terrible. Uh, and we, we've had some really awful, more modern centre forwards. But this lad was the worst. You know, he was, he's, and, and I've all picked players that I've physically seen, by, by the way. So I've not gone with players I've not seen. That's and, what I uh, and, uh, and he was the worst I've seen. I think, I genuinely think he's the worst I've seen up front. He had nothing. Genuinely yeah. had nothing. Again, found his level at uh, PSV. Um, yeah, well, and, and there, is a, there is a reason why the Dutch league is not like people harp on about it, but it's not really that great, is it? Let's be honest. 2022 uh, was when he signed up PSV. He's still there. Uh, 58, 58 appearances, 43 goals. Well, there you That's go. That's what we need to know about that league. Yeah, it, that's ex exactly. I mean, look at Anthony, who's been so, bought for 80 odd million, and he's terrible. He's absolutely terrible, isn't he? So yeah. I think that tells you all you need to know. Um, okay, so I think so we, uh, we have your 11. We're on your bench. Bench. Um, we'll go with the first one. Uh, fanfare. Bought him. Spent a lot of money on him. Bailed out the minute we were relegated. And I thought he was going to be great. And he was truly dire. And he could have made the first 11. And that was Damien Duff. It, possibly the most disappointing player I've seen at the club. Because I had such high hopes for Damien Duff. We bought him for £5 million, if I recall rightly. I remember being at work thinking, wow, we've got Damien Duff. Fantastic. Uh, he was so good. for. He was genuinely top draw for Chelsea. And I thought, wow, this, this is going to be superb. I'm not sure if we bought him from Blackburn or Chelsea. I can't remember now. But uh, he was, he just literally was awful. He, he offered very little. He wasn't blisteringly quick or anything. He was average paced. He could reasonably cross the ball on occasions. He could shoot on occasions. 
but he just didn't really have an awful lot going for him. And the minute we were relegated, he bailed out as if it was everybody else's fault and as if he had nothing to do with it. Five million pounds there. from Chelsea, but he, Chelsea. Stayed, he actually he actually stayed, and I forgot this. He stayed because he played the first game of the championship season, um, and he scored the first goal in the championship. Did he go? He must have went straight away there, though, did he? He, he must went have done. straight. Yeah, he went. So he went straight after that. He scored our first yeah. goal against West Brom in a televised right. game in the championship, and then he left to go right. to Fulham after that. Right. Okay, game. that makes sense. Um, yeah, I just thought he was awful. And I, the most disappointing of all the players I've picked on the list there, I could all possibly throw an Alan Smith into that as well because I thought he would be a player. But uh, no, he was just awful. Um, I will never but, understand why Alan Shearer played him left back though. I know he was a left-footed player, um, and especially losing Joey Barton with that daft sending off to play yeah. him left, left to play him left back was that that can't have been Alan's decision. That has to yeah. be Ian Dowie. Ian Dowie yeah. was a master of relegation. Um, yeah, yeah, he was getting clubs sent down. I'll never understand that. Yeah, I'm not sure he would have done that now. Like, but and he uh, conceded the goal. He he was the one who conceded the own goal. Yeah, I, I forgot that they played him further back as well on occasions as well as like a wing back, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. awful. He wanted to. He did want to stay, but I think he was. I, I get where you're coming from, but I think the club wanted to sell him. He was a sellable asset, wasn't he as well? So Mike Ashley, Mike Ashley wasn't going to wasn't going to hang on to somebody he could sell for four million and recoup some money. He'd already lost. He'd already lost money through his own stupidity by getting us relegated. But um, but yeah, I know where you're coming from. He should have delivered so much more, shouldn't he? Absolutely. I was so so disappointed in him. You know, Owen's another one. Michael Owen's another one that should have probably been on the list. But he did, to be fair to him, score a number of goals, which I think people sometimes forget about. Keegan played Owen as an attacking midfielder more than a centre forward. Yeah. Um, which was a interesting choice. And to be fair, he did score quite a lot of goals under Keegan, mm -hmm. um, which was, in, you know, as I say, a little bit of a surprise. Um, but yeah, no, nah, not for me. Yeah. Okay, so he's one of your subs. Who's next? Next, Jeremy. Uh, hey. he's, been, he's been Middlesbrough's player of the season for about two or three years or something ridiculous. So he came with a big fanfare. And uh, I remember Bobby Robson using the quote of, he's got a 30-year-old body with 40-year-old legs. You know? <laughs> and uh, his legs had gone by the time he'd signed for Newcastle. So he was, unfortunately for him, he showed zero quality, very little quality. Um, and now again, a player that you listen to all the Borough fans going, oh, Jeremy's class, he's this, that and the other. Well, he might have been for Middlesbrough. Now, obviously, he probably was for Middlesbrough. I've got a good friend, Chris, who's a Borough fan, loves Jeremy. Uh, but for us, he was awful. He was awful. He was just, oh, my God. He just, he, he put passes awry. He was, um, he, he just, he, he wasn't great in the tackle. He was so slow at that point. He was like running in treacle. And uh, he just, he offered nothing. And again, you'll notice a lot of my players are from that era, you know. So I've got Alan Smith, Joey Barton, Damien Duff, Jeremy, you know, all from that same period of time when it was so desperately bad to watch. And uh, that's uh, pro probably all tarnished with the same sort of thing, to be, to be fair to them. So Jeremy makes it. And I know I could have thrown in the likes of Fumaka and others, but uh, who? But at least Fulham, like I made his laugh. Um, but uh, yeah, Jeremy, I just thought he was rubbish. He, he, he was pretty bad. Um, yeah, and I think he's. I think he's a forgotten player as well. And that's why I brought him in as well, just to remind people that we did buy some absolute dross, and uh, Jeremy being one of them. I mean, we could have. I, I could have picked players who were well past it, like Ian Rush, who's one of my favourite ever centre forwards. Mm -hmm. But he was so bad for Newcastle, but I didn't want to put him in because of what he'd been. You know, he'd been so great. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I've thrown Jeremy in. Um, yeah, Jeremy. He, he was actually club captain. I can't believe he, that. Sam, 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 Sam Allardyce gave him the captaincy. I, I can't remember that. You know, I've, I've obviously tried to block it out of my memory. You know? <laughs> I do remember a goal he scored. Um, I was there. It was at White Hart Lane. It was against Spurs. It was a free kick, and it was a brilliant goal. Um, but other than that, I'd forgotten about him. You know what I mean? It was only when you mentioned him, yeah. uh, you know, so I could search the, the pictures to, to, to put up for the for the for this. He actually got the um, 
uh, final as well in the African Nations Cup for Cameroon. So right. he, had a, he had a bit of success. Well, I mean, he, was, he was a good player at some point. As I say, Borough picked him as player of the season for a number of consecutive years, I think that was the case. So uh, and they used to really big him up. But unfortunately, yeah. as Robson rightly said, his legs had gone by the time he'd signed for us. Did nothing after that. At Newcastle, no. when he left Newcastle, he ended up going to uh, Ankaraku or whatever they're called in, in AEL. I mean, two, right. he played 22 games in, in the next couple of years and, and just petered out in non, non existence. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I can see why he's in. I definitely agree with that. So, and uh, last is, is, the, is the mighty Frank Pingle. <laughs> you know, another Denmark's finest. Another another player who gets mentioned when you mention the worst players you've ever seen list, and uh, yeah, he couldn't hit a barn door. No, <laughs> gangly, uh, ball bounced off him. It's the old cliche of every second touch was it was a tackle. He just had all. He just yeah. He had. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he he uh, he was just terrible. He was terrible. I mean, it was, did he play for about a year or something for us? 14 games, mate. One yeah. year. And he was there in that wonderful 88, 89 season, yeah, which I used to watch regularly on video to remind myself well, of well, I had the record shot then, so I didn't get to see him play many times. I've probably only seen him about three or four times. But he was so memorably bad that, that, that uh, yeah, that it, that it, it, it springs to mind. He was just terrible. I remember going thinking, "Wow, this is this is this guy's terrible. Is this really what we've resorted to at this point?" And and unfortunately, it was. And there were others who could have made the list. John Hendry would have been the one that could have made the list, uh, and, and others. Uh, it was Robertson. All there was a number of players that we got round about that period of time, who were just quite frankly atrociously bad. Uh, yeah. So that's your team. Who's your manager? Well, I'm going to pour it out here now. There was a number of choices. There was Bill McGarry, who was Sergeant Major, wasn't he? The Sergeant Major, he was awful. Jack Charlton could have been one of them. And I know that I didn't really want to pick Charlton because of, you know, he's local and all the rest of it. And I, I, you know, I liked him and I met him a few times. He was a nice bloke. Um, but his football was terrible. Uh, who else was I going to, that you could have, I could have picked? Uh, trying to think, Hullet. Um, I, I certainly could have added um, Steve McLaren would have, would have been a one that would have been up there. I, I think the worst manager we've had is Steve Bruce, but the per the manager I detest or dislike the most is Sam Allardyce. So I've gone with Sam Allardyce because he's the only manager, and as bad as Bruce was, and he was, I think, genuinely the worst I've seen. Uh, I, I, he's the only manager I think. That I've watched the match and I've never understood the formation and I've never understood the football. I remember sitting there at one of the games thinking, what formation are they playing? Is it 4 4 2, 4 3 3? Is there one behind them? And they just kept lumping the ball up front to Michael Owen. They just kept kicking it high and long. And I thought, well, that's not going to work. And it didn't. And he had about 40 members on the coach and staff. And Newcastle looked really unfit to my eyes anyway at the time. I genuinely think Kevin Keegan saved us from being relegated that season when he took over because I thought we were going down. I'm sure Sam Allardyce could whip out a statistic to say that the Newcastle United had never been better and we were probably going to win the title that year. But uh, to me, to my eyes, it was the worst, the worst quality of football I think I've seen at the club. And bear in mind, he had some decent footballers. But the, the quality of the football was just awful. It was long ball garbage. And I know he doesn't like it. And he, and he, he can whip out a statistic to see he doesn't play a long ball. But my eyes tell me otherwise. And so Sam Allardyce beats Steve Bruce, even though Bruce is by far the worst manager we've ever had. Because Allardyce, to me, always looked like he was trying to get a draw in a home game. Oh, I'm yeah. going to try and get a draw against Sunderland at home. Oh, go out and try and beat them. Thank you very much. You know, it always felt like he was trying to get a draw. Yeah. It was awful to watch. And uh, and he could always spin this garbage after the match. And he had all his mates in Sky and all that. Oh, Sam, the big Sam, this, that, and the other. And I hate all that sort of stuff. Bruce has a big chunk of that as well. And, uh, yeah, 
yeah, terrible. And I, yes, I could, as I say, easily have picked Steve Bruce because he was the worst I've seen. But uh, Allardyce gets it for the style of football and all his bluster. Yeah. So. Well, that's it. Steve Hardwick was in goal. Um, we had uh, a wonderful back four of John Bailey. <laughs> John Bailey. Mark Stinson. <laughs> uh, John Allen Boomsong and uh, Sol Campbell, his partner in crime at the back. Uh, into the midfield, we had Kevin Dillon. Uh, a couple of controversial ones, Sid said, in Alan Smith and uh, Joey Barton. And, uh, of course, the quickest winger who couldn't take the ball with him, uh, Wayne Faraday. And uh, then we had uh, this wonderful guy, uh, Luke De Jong and uh, Andreas Anderson, uh, partnering him up front. And uh, then under the bench, we had uh, Damien Duff and we had Jeremy and a centre forward as well to come on and do some uh, damage probably in his own net, Frank Pingle, and then um, managing the team, uh, Big Sam. Yeah, Sam Allardyce, a legend in his own back garden. Yeah. Um, wonderful teammate. Yeah, very enjoyable. Great stuff. Thanks for doing it. Look forward to seeing you on the next talk of the tune. Right. Take care, Sid. Thanks. Take care, mate. Bye bye. <laughs> a big thanks to all our sponsors, Skips and Bins. You can find their website at skipsandbins.com. Contact us www.skipsandbins.com forward slash contact. Say hello to low cost waste disposal with pay as you go and contract waste management. A big thanks to Mr. Vicky's Sources, handmade in Cumbria. Their website, mrvickies.co.uk. Email info at mrvickies.co.uk. Telephone 01768. 210102. Thanks to United Group Travel. They are the Travel and Tourism Award winners in 2024. Their website, www.unitedgrouptravel.com. Email, beverly.ugtl at gmail.com. Or telephone 01670 632 460. Or mobile 0791 666. 4174. Just £30 per person deposit. There are no strangers on our tours, just friends you haven't met yet. A big thanks to Media Arts. You can find them at www.media arts.co.uk. And don't forget, we are a podcast. You can find us on iTunes or Spotify or other podcast providers. If you want to help the channel grow, then hit the like button, the little thumb underneath the video, click share and share to your social media, or join the channel for as little as $1.99 a month. If you want to take out a one-off payment membership, go to nufcmatters.com and hit membership. And for a £25 fee, you get a scarf, a cup, a pen, and a membership card. You can also put a smartphone over the top of this QR code. It'll take you straight there. And don't forget, we also help the food bank on this channel. NUFCfansfoodbank.co.uk is a website where you can make a virtual donation today. Mm -hmm.